So if you saw the last performance test, you saw that we've added some tools to our robot chassis. We have metal clips up here, which grab the pin when we run into it. And then we have a forklift that helps pick up the skid. The forklift is powered by a servo, and that is mounted to the bottom of the chassis. Uh, this helped with space as well as uh, with the torque on the end of the forklift arms. We have a shorter lever arm here on the servo and a longer lever arm here, so it just helps change the ratio and give us a little bit more uh, power out of our servo. Um, the RPS and the clips are mounted to this half inch uh, beam that's aluminum, and this is hollow, so it let us route all of our wires uh, through, which helps reduce the mess. Uh, we have had some issues though. Uh, first of all is the suspension. The front suspension has a lot of load when the robot is carrying the skid, and as you can see, it's uh, basically broken right now. The spring is on the road. Yeah, it's just it's a mess. The spring got pushed to the side and it doesn't work anymore. So I have to redo the suspension uh, on that front right wheel. The back wheel doesn't have much load, so the back wheel is working fine. Uh, another thing that we had issues with is the wheels not lining up uh, perfectly straight when we want to go forward. Uh, I was talking about before in the video, the previous video, that uh, the linkage pieces have to be the perfect length in order for all four wheels to be flush with the chassis and we found that that's really hard to do so to help I've actually rebuilt the linkage system and I'll open that up and uh, show you that right now here's version 2 and as you can see the gears are now gone that helped uh, reduce the play in the whole system so here's the first position and it moves like that uh, now the one disadvantage of getting rid of the gears is we can no longer put all four wheels at 45 degree angles uh, at the same time. So if this wheel and that wheel are at a 45 degree angle, these two wheels will be a 30 degree angle. And that's just a result of how the geometry works. Uh, the next uh, thing that I'm going to do is actually replace all of these solid linkages with bands. I'll have two bands uh, going like that to there, and then same with all the other four wheels. And uh, I'm going to try this because right now, if we tension all four wheel housings against the side of the chassis, it puts a lot of stress on this motor, or the servo, and we're risking burning out the servo. So if we have uh, stretchy linkages, we should be able to reduce the load and uh, kind of you know not, not burn out servos and stuff. While I'm at that, I also plan to replace our current encoders with rotary encoders. So let's see if I have one. We have these rotary encoders and uh, I'm going to actually try to embed this in uh, the wheel housing and the center part will actually be inside of the wheel. So we think that that's going to give us a little bit more accuracy and uh, reduce the error when we're driving straight. Well, uh, I switched out the linkage system for the band idea and uh, this is how it works. Let me plug it in here. So uh, you can see uh, it's kind of created one problem uh, while solving the other. So the wheel housings are now flush with the chassis uh, but it no longer uh, has smooth transitions. So we went ahead and entered this in a performance test anyway uh, but it probably will need to be changed out. So here's the rotary encoders there and then um, coming up as a transition. So as you can see it's not smooth. So we are now going back to the drawing board and I am going to be working on version 4 coming up.